All right, calling tonight's workshop meeting to order. We have a lot of ground to cover tonight, so I just want to make sure we stayed prompt. Um, can I please have the attendance? Sure can. Mrs. Durgan? Here. Mrs. Giftis? Mrs. Glidden? Here. Mr. Gill? Ms. Casalonis? Here. Ms. Layton? Here. Mrs. Scyther? Here. Ms. Caldwell? Here. And Mr. Bennett? Here. Perfect. If you could join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So I'd like to introduce Chris Collins to everybody. He's here with The Edge to talk about the project that's underway. And Hi. Wow. Can I just say before he starts, I just want to thank Chris for coming because there was a change mm -hmm. in the schedule doing, due to the storm. And so really appreciate him coming. You have two documents in front of you. One. And Chris may refer to these. So, one is um, a rendering of how the building might look outside, depending on you know the final interior design. And then um, you have another document that is front and back, um, kind of layout of interior. Um, and this is based on some initial discussions. O obviously, all of this is subject to some change or, or a different design or pretty much the, the ice rink and the turf field is pretty much not going to change. But besides that, there, the other items um, in the boxes might, might change. Um, And so Chris will also talk about when he gets going, the things that no matter what else happens, because I know that there's been a lot of talk about um, the ad hoc committee on Mondays um, and, and the work that the town side is doing and what the edge is going to do. And, I, and Chris will hit on tonight, you know, what, what's, what, what they're going to do no matter what. And then also um, just kind of you know review the review the layout here. So I'm sure you'll have a lot of questions when when he gets done, but he'll kind of go over that, and then you can answer any questions that you might have that you might have. Thanks everyone for having me. Chris Collins with the Edge Sports Group. I've been with this company for seven, eight years now, right out of college. So. Uh, been going with these guys since before there even was an edge sports group. So thank you all for having me and looking forward to getting this thing underway here, right next door. Uh, what we do is develop, design, build, and operate recreation centers. Um, there's a list of our core five that we have done so far. There's a few other projects that we've consulted on, worked on, but those are the major ones, all located around the Metro West and Worcester down in Boston, um, 25 years of recreational experience across the company. All started with our president, Brian DeVillis, um, land use attorney, and he will get into the first facility, the Edge Sports Center Bedford. Um, it's from Bedford, another guy in town wanted a ice hockey rink. He wanted a turf into a turf field, so lacrosse guy himself, he got with the hockey guy, they put their brains together, created the Edge of Bedford. Um, since then, that guy was in 07, um, you know, ran that, you know, expanded it into phase two, which was two outdoor fields, which we'll get into, and been running the company ever since. So, our core area where we operate is public private partnerships. Um, land these days is hard to come by, you know, communities need to be building police, fire, schools. Uh, they don't need to be building multi-million dollar sports facilities. So that's where we come in. Um, what we do from, we take the project from the assessment feasibility market study, which in our case here in Scarborough has already been, for the most part, wrapped up. Uh, we then go to design, permit, and construction management, which is where we're 
kind of merging into now, and then programming operations. So we cover the gamut of running these facilities. Sorry, I can't hear you on TV. Oh. And now it's on TV. Millions of viewers worldwide. No one told me that one. Okay, I'm going to go on that. So, anything from youth all the way from kindergarten, preschoolers, all the way on up to senior citizens, our buildings serve, um, you know, and that's truly the lifeblood that keeps these things running. You can't open a sports center and just run it from 5 to 8 o'clock. You need to offer services and programs for every single member of the community throughout the day and throughout the year. You know, obviously, needs change, and what we try to do is create an, an ecosystem that services all of the needs for everyone in the community. You know, you can't take every box, but you can take most of them. So that's try to move. Okay. Who's that? Uh, <laughs> Weirdo. Assessment and feasibility. Um, so some projects will respond to RFPs, um, and you know, some projects we do unsolicited. They come to us and say, "Hey, we want a sports center. We want you to run a feasibility study." see what it would look like in this area, you know, we think it would be a great fit. So those are basically how we come to it. If you look here, um, where are you going? So this is the Essex Sports Center, which is on Essex Technical School in Middleton, Mass. So the school is down here, and they, this plot of land was unused. So what we did was look at a ground lease with the school and with the state, built the sports center up there. The school gets priority access, use of the sports center, and you get the land there to use for 50 years. And down here at the edge of Bedford, this is the first one we talked about. This was Mass Portland um, in Bedford, Massachusetts. So Hanscom Air Force Base is right over here across the road. And this is a later rendering of it. But originally, this was the turf field. This was a hockey rink. And this was nothing. Now you're going to see that there are two ice sheets here, two outdoor fields with a bubble. That's a quick rundown. So project design permit and construction management. Um, as I mentioned, you know, we're involved in every aspect of it. We don't just do the feasibility study and then when the construction company is ready to hand the keys over, we're involved in every construction meeting moving forward, all the change orders, every little detail that we have in our background of experience that make these things work and make them operate and make them functional. That's why we're involved in construction management. A lot of people who do what we do, they're not involved. Programming and operations, um, where we're sort of getting into now, is what are going to be the core uses of this facility. Whether it's the pool, the ice rink, the turf, whatever it may be, who are those core users for not only the short term but the long term, which is where I believe the schools come into play and we want to definitely take care of the school and the community as a whole. So, everyone's familiar enough with the Downs project, so we'll run through this one quickly. Um, so we have our sports center at the Downs. Wait, can you just, oh. does that show where it is on the property? Yep. Oh. It'll be right over here. That oval is the existing horse track. That's the track. existing track. Yep. That's the grandstand. Okay. It's going to be right over there. And is, what's that road? Is that the, Actually, the is that Hagas? It should be Hagas. Yes. Okay. So to get to it, would you take, you'd probably take the road that goes to the old horse stables, come around the okay. side of the track that way. The one that they're constructing right now? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So if you go on the, we've been through that recently, the main road takes you here. These are, I just showed through. So this is where what's done now, this is the next phase in that road. Vegas comes all the way through here. Yeah, it's right this way. Okay. Thank you. So we've, you know, mind you, the formatting's a little quirky on this one because I made it on Mac, but um, <clears throat> market announcement, analysis and feasibility study for the Scarborough project. Uh, this is what we found by talking to schools, club teams, youth sports programs, community members from young age all the way on up to senior citizens.
So we looked at ice rink, aquatic center, indoor outdoor turf field, and multi-surface courts. Um, when we get into the project in there, we'll get a little bit more into the multi-surface courts and how many sports you can truly do on one court. So what we, what I like to look at is make a surface as dynamic as possible because you never know what's going to be the new it thing. So is anyone familiar with pickleball? Oh, yeah. Pickleball has exploded in the past five years. Yeah. So now all the tennis courts around are being converted into pickleball use too. So when you create a basketball court, you want that to be used for volleyball, pickleball, and tennis ball, tennis, um, excuse me, <laughs> <laughs> all in one and can be used for community events as well. There's Market Street coming in as sort of a Main Street USA vibe to it here. And there's Haggis Parkway coming along this way, just so everyone has a frame of reference. And then the outdoor fields are on this half of the building. So on year renderings in the room, um, to the first review, you guys. This is where the outdoor fields are going to be. So we have a frame of reference in the outdoor fields right here. Yep. Here's the existing track. Yeah. Existing track where the outdoor fields will be. Market Street, Davis Parkway, Indoor Sports Center. Another view. And here's what's inside. Now this is a little outdated. Um, I sent in some, a few adjustments to the design team. So when you look at this, things are in the process of changing. The biggest one being that the locker room space right here in the middle, uh, I would like to shift this over and move the competition pool side that. So what you see here is a warm pool, zero entry, 25 yard warm pool. Um, so zero entry into three lanes, that'll always be there. Some fun water features for the little ones to get them involved in swimming and swim lessons. And then this bigger pool over here, that's going to be a six to eight lane, 25 grade pool in this rendering. Now there are a few other pool options floating around, but the key to pools is you know, making them as dynamic as possible. So you can run your swim lessons and it's not disrupting your swim teams. You can run swim teams and it's not disrupting your water release. You know, you need to be able to run your programming year round without disrupting it by high school swim teams disrupting five-year-old swim class. Um, main entrance here, come on in. This will be the com community center space the town would like it to be. So come in, you know, check in at the desk, a few multi-purpose rooms for a senior center, teen center, whatever it may be in these rooms, which they're working hard to figure out right now. Strength and conditioning here, concessions and pro shop up here, basketball court over there, indoor turf field, roughly 60 yards by 40 yards, and then you come to the back where there's the hockey rink over here. So four dedicated day rooms. So day rooms are can be used by any youth hockey team, any figure skating team. Two dedicated team rooms up here, which will change. I have another change order in on these plans to add a dedicated bathroom here. So the thinking on this is dedicated high school and team locker rooms over here for the high school team. So they're separate. It's on their own. It's their own space. You know, they're not bringing their bags back and forth every single day to the home. The second floor, a lot of viewing area and an indoor walking track. So the pool is right below here, pool viewing area on the second floor, ice rink viewing area over here with restrooms, walking track around the turf, and more tenant space up here. So this is all undefined right now. There's a few different options floating around on what could go up there. Um, most are sports related. So. Did you see tenant space? Tenant spaces, yeah. So, you know, your strength and conditioning, your tutoring, your child care, we can swing it mostly in child care because it's the first floor, but um, yeah, so those would be the spaces up there. So we've gone through and I've looked at everything. I became, learned everything I possibly could about esports in a month because we were looking to put esports in the facility. So, what's that? Esports? Video, competitive video. I don't want to. We're so old. We don't need to get in it. We're, we're not going to get into that. It, it didn't happen. So let me just tell you that. 
Did you know didn't talk to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> we honestly, guys, we look at absolutely everything. So it's there's no idea that's too far fetched. We've looked at putting in rock walls on the side of a hockey rink. Wow. It'd be cold. Um, you know, so in rock walls going from the turf, looking up over it, we've looked at absolutely everything. Um, for not only this facility, but other facilities, so we draw back from that past experience and see what works, what fits for that community. Once again, you know, our core reaches our assessment of feasibility, that leads to design permit and construction management, to programming and operations, and <coughs> first side with the formatting, it's gone a little bit over, but you can see sort of our past projects. Um, from Crossman's Golf Club to the Worcester Ice Center, take experience of each and every one of those. And all the facilities, they have different elements that we tweaked to fit that building and that, those core user groups. Um, the outside view of the four or five projects there. Set this as the first one. So this is the edge in Bedford, which I mentioned earlier. The picture on the left side over here, this is the way it started. This was an indoor turf field. This was an ice hockey rink. The program grew so much in two years, we scrapped the turf field and put in a, a second hockey sheet, which is what you see today. There's still a demand for indoor turf and outdoor turf. So we put in two outdoor turf fields. And this one right here, this is one of those turf fields that we put a bubble up over in the winter time now. As you can see, Summer view, winter view. And it's cool. What we do is we don't, so the way this turf field works is it's split into thirds. You don't rent up the entire thing. Um, indoor turf space pretty hard, is pretty hard to come by. So um, we rent it, we would rent it into thirds. From the edge in Bedford, um, Brian, the president of the company, wanted to go off and venture off and build more of these. You know, from the day that place opened, yeah, we get a phone call every week in his background being um, development and landscape architecture and just wanted to go off in that path. So left the edge of Bedford, took a couple of us with them and we've been going on this journey. So the first one off on after the edge of Bedford was the Essex Sports Center, which is on Essex tax property. Um, we had to go to state legislature to get the land lease approved. So pretty eventful case study in our book. Um, going through legislation, signed off by the governor to get a 25 year land lease done with the state of Massachusetts. Typically they keep it three to five years. What year was the Bedford um, complex developed? 07, 08, and then phase two was in 2012. And that was the first one, Bedford? Bedford was the first one, Essex was the second one. Um, our acre tents here in at the Essex Sports Center, Essex Tech, St. John's Prep, both have dedicated team locker rooms, play all their home games there, um, and truly make it their home. You know, work, nice, clean facilities. We don't like to do overkill. You know, you walk into some sports centers nowadays and there's murals all over the place, so we keep ours very clean, functional, um, and good to use for anybody and everyone. Turf area in here is a little bit bigger than um, the one we'll see in Scarborough, but it gets the job done. You can split it into two and get two middle school teams out there, no problem at all. Next was the Worcester Ice Center, um, downtown Worcester um, on Harding Street. Uh, this was part of the Worcester Redevelopment Committee. Our partners. Um, purchased the Worcester Railers, a junior minor hockey team, excuse me, we own a junior team called the Worcester Railers, too. Um, minor hockey team in Worcester, and we needed a place to practice and truly build a hub of hockey in Worcester, Mass. For us to the Worcester Ice Center, it's a two sheet facility, no turf, um, about 10,000 feet of strength and conditioning, another three to 4,000 feet of physical therapy, and there's two restaurants in this facility. Um, Worcester's kind of become a hub for food activity. Um, we have Steam Cafe, which is 
coffee, I'd say you rolls, all sorts of fun stuff. And then we actually have a brew pub and coming in to the space down here. There's a quick view. So you'll notice in a lot of our projects, you're going to see this is the first floor here. We have locker rooms, dedicated team rooms. This means the high schools and the colleges right here, and the day locker rooms there. On the second floor, all the viewing. So kids on the first floor, parents on the second floor. It's the trend that we like to keep. Um, right for tents here in Worcester. Worcester, there's a lot of colleges that play out of this facility as well. Um, from Worcester State, Becker, Junior Railers, the WPI also plays there. This one is going, the next project, which opened up in July this past summer. So we broke ground and opened this project up in 364 days, so just under a year. This is going to be a one AHLI street and a half, plus an indoor field house and some school, dedicated school space on the second floor for alumni and special events. Um, this is with their academy. What they had originally on the site was where our building was, there was an additional four turf fields. Turf fields were at the end of their life cycle. It was the only school in the ISL without their own dedicated hockey rink, although they produced many of Olympians and have won the league plenty of times over. Um, but they never had a true home rink. So public-private partnership with them to develop an ice rink facility for their teams and a multi-surface slash turf field inside. The unique thing about this project is you see these renderings here where it says turf. Um, over the summer we changed plans and pivoted because there was a demand for basketball in the area. So what we have here is four basketball courts, four tennis courts, eight pickleball courts, four volleyball courts from Easter to Thanksgiving. And then from Thanksgiving to Easter, we roll out turf and pallets. So during those peak indoor turf times, you have that indoor <coughs> turf there. The rest of the year, you cycle through with all the court sports while the turf users can be outside. So this will be something that we'll be looking into doing in Scarborough as well. <coughs> now, they wanted to make this their true home. We own the building, we finance the building, they own the dirt, public private partnership between us and their academy. Um, and what they did was they made, they fundraised on their own to do all these capital improvements that you're about to see. So this scoreboard right here in the middle, Bell Senti Rink, um, their tiger, black and orange everywhere. See these little paneling on the rink over here? These are normally just silver, generic steel. They upgraded them to orange to make it their true home. There's a tiger or a paw print on every single door in that facility to make it their home. Their dedicated team rooms over here. Um, the alumni stepped up and paid for their team rooms, so they have some very, very impressive NHL alumni that have, that have all donated giving back to the community and the school. Tiger on top, nice blue and locker room. Rivals most college rooms. Um, so Jeremy Rodin, Tony Monty. Brooks Orpik and Ryan Whitney all went to their academy and all still involved with the school. So this truly makes it theirs home, but it's still used by everybody else. But it's a recruiting tool and a calling card for their academy. This brings us to the next one. This is the latest and greatest of our projects to open up. It's 130,000 square feet in Wellesley, Massachusetts. Um, this is where our company's house auto is. So ESG, this is our kind of home base for the time being. Um, Town of Wellesley has wanted a sports facility like this for 20, 25 years. Um, the, on this site used to be St. James Church, which was closed down by the Boston Archdiocese. The Town of Wellesley purchased the land for the purpose of some sort of community recreation, something. Um, what they did was they put out an RFP we responded to that RFP. Four other companies responded to the RFP as well. We all got rejected. We were given 24 hours to resubmit. We resubmitted and won the bid. We moved forward. So um, inside this building, 
I'm formatting stuff again. Sorry, I made this on the Mac, so it's a little quirky. But um, two NHL size ice sheets, a 13 lane, 25 yard pool, a warm lesson pool, which is 10 yards by 15 yards, indoor walking track, <coughs> indoor turf field, tutoring center, um, physical therapy, sports med, strength and conditioning, concessions, pro shop, and an art teacher as well. So these are some of our anchor tenants. Um, per the ground lease with Wellesley, Wellesley Youth Hockey, Wellesley High School Hockey, Wellesley Youth Soccer, Wellesley Youth Lacrosse, Wellesley Youth Swimming, and Wellesley High School Swimming got first priority access to their time on the surface. Some of the building phases, as you can see in the back here on these two, those are going to be the two ice surfaces. Over here is the turf area. This is going to be one of, this is the main competition pool, and this is the warm pool. And then the tenant spaces all split off in a T across the building. First floor is on your left, second floor is on the right. Now, what we try to do is create an ecosystem for the community. And it's a buzzword, and I wish I didn't have to use it, but I, it's the only way to describe it. So bear with me when you hear it another hundred times as we go through this process. Um, so part of that ecosystem is, you know, the kids come from school, mom and dad drop them off, bus drops them off. They can go directly upstairs. They do their homework up here in the tutoring center. Then they can go to strength and conditioning, physical therapy, wherever they need. Then they go practice on whatever surface it is that they need. And then mom or dad pick them up at 8 o'clock, and you can get a pre-prepared meal from the concession stand, and you're done parenting for the day. Doesn't sound too bad, right? So, I don't have kids, but I date them. Uh, in this room, you're going to, if you remember back to the Worcester layout, it's very, very similar, except these are the dedicated team rooms over here on this side, and these are the day lock rooms here. Get that two ice sheets on either side, and then parents on the second floor. This is the aquatic center in Wellesley. This is the 2012 Olympic trial pool. Um, originally, it was set up on a flat slab in Omaha, Nebraska, so Michael Phelps, Ryan Mocky, David Becky, all swam in it, broke records in it. We took that 50 meter pool, scaled it down to 25 meters, gave it a true home. So there's 10 lanes coming this way, and three lanes coming here, and this white piece in the middle is a movable bulkhead, so you can set it at any depth you need. So the pool's 25 yards long, or 25 yards wide, excuse me, 25 meters long. Diving well as well, and then there's a small warm pool tucked in underneath by the locker rooms. And this is, this picture is a little outdated. We have a giant video scoreboard over here now. Warm lesson pool, so cycling through swim lessons, water aerobics, um, physical therapy, fitness classes, pretty much anything that you can do on dry land. They're now doing a pool that you, instead of doing a cycling class in a studio, they'll drop the cycles in a pool now. Treadmills and pools, you name it, they'll use anything they can for rehab. Our walking track, uh, around about eight times around is a mile. Uh, but if you think that any indoor turf facility you've ever been to, you know, they need high ceilings, and this is basically unused space in most of them. So what we did, we did in Wellesley, and we're getting incorporated in the Scarborough project is a walking track for the colder months. One of the two ice sheets, so you know, a little reference of what all the maps look like inside. NHL CRC, Wells Youth Hockey has a center ice logo over here. Um, and this will be their main game rank where they're, we can see about 700. What this brings us to is sort of the options that we can discuss and work through. So, you know, from preferred ice time, preferred pool time, those are probably the quick and easy ones where the kids are not practicing at at the pool and ice schedule last week when we got canceled on and it was it was something. I don't know if you guys play sports. What sport do you play? I swim from okay. there until like nine thirty. Yeah. Yeah. And then you have to turn around the next day and yeah. either go to school or go practice yeah. at again at six in the morning, right? So, you know, 
having those available, you know, a stone throw, throw from the school, you're not traveling up to Cape or South Portland or Moose and wherever it may be, it makes everyone's lives a little bit easier. It makes the kids better in the classroom, more accountable in the classroom where they're not practicing and not getting home at time at night. Um, you know, I like to call it quite <coughs> set normal times now. Um, dedicated team rooms, as you covered, any indoor or outdoor field use, I know you guys are redoing your current field, but if there's any overflow scheduling conflict, we can certainly help out there. Um, I know it's on the swim schedule and on the hockey schedule, there's dry land, off-ice training incorporated. We can host that all in the sports center. If there's any overflow with the basketball courts and we do keep that basketball model we discussed, we can take care of that as well. Programmable space during the daytime, so if gym class needs, would like to incorporate um, <coughs> skating or swimming or whatever sport it may be, you know, curling. You know, um, you can come over and then if there's any need for office space slash dedicated training room space because we will be frequenting the facility a lot for the trainers, we can obviously incorporate that as well on the second floor or the third floor. So that's sort of the basic layout of what we've done in the past with schools um, and with communities. So. Can you switch, go back to the this design? Yep. Up there. And I, I think the board would want to hear what would, um, no matter what else is happening in the town, what, what are the spaces that the edge would, is for sure going to be, going to be doing? It might, it might look different, so, but. It may look different. There's a few different versions of plans I'm working through right now. The ice rink. It's definitely the ice rink. Indoor tire. These two outdoor tire field. Well, somewhere down here. Uh, the pool may change shape. There will be some kind of pool. Uh, it may not be a membership-based pool. It may be more of a fitness center-based pool. You know, if you've been in an LA Fitness or an Equinox, they're a little bit more scaled down uh, for swim lessons like that but we but it'd be 25 yard six we, lane we could use it it'd be a smaller yeah. smaller version yeah you, know, you wouldn't go full scale with this but it'd be a much smaller pool if we were to do a pool so it, know, could I you just ask a question about that <clears throat> yeah so it, if it's scaled down it might not be attractive space for our swim pro programs of practice right. we would have to then so in an ideal it would be fantastic the town would like to be involved in this first section here. If they choose not to be, then we'd have to go look elsewhere for pool user groups and see where that brings us. So, yeah, Chris, just a comment from yeah. uh, so Leanne and I are on the ad hoc committee, mm -hmm. I've, community center, and we so we had a meeting last night, and um, we can give you guys a broader update, but. Our understanding, or at least my understanding, leaving last night, and Mike, maybe this is just a miscommunication, was the the rink and the turf are certain; those will happen regardless. Yeah. The pool is is a question mark. So that's like the number one thing that came back on the survey that people want. But the what type of pool is is in question. So I think to it's, Chris's point, that's not a guarantee, at least from my perspective. Um, but if we come in with that partnership, then I think that would be the first thing that the yeah at least the community is saying that they want. The community is saying they want it. I mean, look, if you guys come back and say, you know, maybe want to tweak some things, may not want to be involved at all, yep. that's fine. Then we restart the process and we go through and look at the pool a little bit differently. But the way the pool is constructed on this rendering is set up for more of a community center style pool. There's a million different style pools out there. You know, some are more or less in water aerobic base. Some are more fitness and health club based, where they're just for laps for members, and some are more competition based. Yeah. Can I just stay on that for a minute? Because yeah. I know that we chatted about the pool a little bit, and so, you know, if the town didn't do anything, we'd have some pool there that could be usable for Correct. a team. Correct. But it's not guaranteed. It's not. It's not a. I can't say a hundred percent for sure. There's other groups interested in. So here's where I get confused a little bit though because I think the if, what if the community if the community says um, if there's not enough support in the community for to fund a pool 
But we say as a school district, we think that there's value in it. Is that enough to, like, financially for them to warrant them actually building it for us as a tenant? You mean the edge or the town? <clears throat> the edge. The edge. Yeah. That's something I think we would need to talk about after the community does their surveys and figures out where that lies. Because we did, we ran our same surveys as well. I can pull them up. And the pool was, a lot of people were interested in having a pool. So, so I mean, are your discussions with the school contingent <coughs> upon the discussions with the town first? No. Okay. So if the Ultimately, school. Ultimately, if they come together, that would be ideal. Uh -huh. But these discussions need to happen one way or the other. So if the school said, yes, we're interested in a pool that would support our swim teams. Yep. Then we look at, is it a rental or are you a tenant? What, what sort of relationship would that be? But for the time being, we're looking at it as is, where if the town's still interested in taking the front half, we would want you know, the school to obviously be an anchor tenant. So as this plays half. out, and we get more definitive decisions from the, the committee, yeah, the steering yeah. committee. Yeah. Say they say, no, we're going to walk away from the, the souped up pool, the competitive yeah. style pool. Then we could talk about what that might look like to make it attractive for you to put the pool in yes. from our perspective. Yes, we could. Because this is, I'm not in love with this area as is. Can you talk about the, the pool? <laughs> this, the, okay. the, this is <laughs> Sorry, not. Sorry, I'm not a huge fan of how this flows, personally. So this will be changing. Um, yeah. so it may change a little bit more. And what we think now, it may get smaller, it may get bigger. We'll have to see where that one takes us. But for the basic town needs and what we, what has been communicated to me with what they would like to see in a pool, it's a competition pool and a zero gravity, or excuse me, zero entry warm pool for lessons, water aerobics, that anybody can get in and out of nice and easily. So can I just ask some clarifying yeah. questions? So this is a little bit different. So we basically have two scenarios where we're like, okay, well, it could go down this path, and then these are the decisions we'd have to make, or it could go down this path, and then these are the decisions we have to make, which yeah. I understand we don't know which path it's going down, but I do think it's a good idea for us to have the information for either way. But am I correct in that this, you're not leasing this land from the town, so this is a this is a different type this of This is a different setup than like, what we did. What we have done doing? things like this in the past, but it's okay. not a it's not like Wellesley where Wellesley it's a right. fifty plus ground. So when you talk about like walking in here and mm -hmm. you're at this front desk or whatever, like yep. how do you manage the fact that two different entities are managing different sections of this building? So it's a lot of communication. And okay. the way hockey and turf work and the flow of the building, you know, you can't get into these spaces unless you get checked in at the front desk. These spaces, another change would be a dedicated entrance right here for the ice and turf and turf. So that's another addition that will be coming soon enough. The strength and addition will have their own entrance and exit from the street and from inside. Same thing with these sections of the pool shop. So, if so the part that is likely to be likely to be a community center is the blue, yes. the orange, and the pink? Yes. It's gray on the back side of this. Gray. There's a gray section. Yeah. That's what you want to say. In the view of the section, which is a little less fun to look at. This is a chunk. This is a gray that. Okay. This section right here. So. The basketball court. So, um, can we talk about what? I mean, I assume you've talked to Mike about mm -hmm. what, like, our, our typical, I mean, I have our practice the, schedules. And I had the schedule from last year, and okay. then it was, uh, it was, like, Mike in a perfect world, you're not practicing at these times, but, yeah, we're practicing at like normal times, so. Right. So, yeah. but you understand okay. our, I you have a sense of our demand. Yes. Right? yes. How many teams was, we have, how many hours of okay. dedicated ice time we need, like the, all those kinds the of things. The big thing would be the pool and how many lanes are you, are you using the full pool or are you using half the pool? How many, and I know it's, I know that's a little bit harder to answer because when you, when you operate pools and say it's a 10 lane pool, essentially you have 10 different services to manage and dictate over the course of the day for different styles of program. So, um, but yeah, so, like general high school, Hockey, high school swimming practice times. We know we can cover that. We can 
service at. And, and this. Yeah. I just want to ask a clarifying question, and this might be part <laughs> Mike as well. Um, so I was once a com competition swimmer, so I want to get some clarification here. So yeah. uh, U.S. swimming, obviously, you want the meter pool, and I really appreciate that you guys have pitched this with a meter pool. But correct me if I'm wrong, MPA still still competes in a, meter, in a yard pool, right? 25 yards. So your yard. So if we were to have a pool, I'm thinking of Cape Elizabeth, it's a 25-yard pool, six lanes. That's more than enough to run a high school or middle school swimming program. It would be oh, ideal. Yeah. From an outside perspective, they have a meter pool, but right now the only one in the area is South Portland. Everybody fights over it, even though it's considerably aged. People still fight over it because it's the only meter pool in the area. But when we're talking about what we need for our relationship, really what we need is a six-lane, 25-yard pool. At the bare minimum. At the bare minimum. That's minute. what's needed. That's what's called. That's what's needed for MPA. Okay. What? In the meter pool system? This is, this is really what we want. <laughs> well, of course it is! <laughs> Don't get me wrong, that's what I want. I'm going to a pretty picture of the pool. <laughs> just to show you that this thing. So, with these lines, that's 25 yards, and then the bulkhead slides and adjusts it. So you see. Like, Even in a meter pool, if you put the bulkhead in, you can make it. Yep, what you, you can, can set it at 25 yards. Yeah. This one's 25 yards wide as well, so technically. If you wanted to run the meat going this way, which I don't know why you ever would, but you could, you could technically do it that way as well. Um, but where the head wall and the diving box are here and the timing system is all wired into one for this design, um, you know, you kind of run the meats the same way here. So, yeah. Are you negotiating with other towns or um, sporting clubs at this point? Not other towns. I okay. wanted to take care of Star Road first. What about other entities? You are. Yeah, we're yeah. talking to other people on, on any service we can. You know, it's, that's sort of the, the job. Right. Just to figure out, you know, what works here, what works in this area, where the demand is, whether it's badminton or hockey. You know, we're going to look into it and talk to anyone and everyone we've got. So when we say partnership and preferred times, what does that mean to Scarborough versus the other organizations that you're speaking with? You get the perspective. Uh, uh, you, exactly. Sometimes. Contracted anyone under LMI wanted to talk with all of you guys, you know, present you with what we've done in the past, let you discuss it, think about it, and then we go from there. So anybody that, if you want to get involved in this and secure this preferred time, secure the locker rooms, the centerized logos, the banners, all the bells and whistles for the athletic programs, you know, that's going to be taken care of first, and then whatever, you know, say, town wants to come in, well, there's going to be a big giant asset center us. So, what I wrote down to piggyback on that is at what stage do you typically start discussions with various entities? So, in this case, I'm defining the school department as an entity, but yeah. you know, the school department would be an entity, and then you know, the club programs go that way. Okay, so at what stage do you typically start these conversations? So we have a general idea of what's going inside, of how the building layout is going to be. You know, the only real changeable thing at this point, surface-wise, would be the pool. So just the shape is going to get changed. Have you done any research with private U.S. swimming clubs in the area? I'm thinking of us, uh, Coastal Maine Aquatics, Portland Porpoises. Those are the kind of places that fight for pool time. And if we have a meter pool in our community center, that could be an earning potential for us as a town. I'm speaking as a town, not as a school board, but certainly would it would help our that, programs as well. That would be something that... I was just wondering if you'd reached out or talked to any of those groups. Okay. But it's Some the... Yeah, but, what would you say? Uh, it's interesting. It is. Yeah. Um, okay, so if we talk about, like, if... Can we get into like the real details of what a partnership would mean? Like so far, I have a preferred preferred time, dedicated locker rooms, branding, and then how does like how is that different than us just renting this space from you? Can you talk about what that? It protects you from me going to South Portland and saying, "Hey, you want X, Y, Z?" Okay, so typically and that protects you. <coughs> it's not for a year. It's so we, so we sign saying. We're going to have this partnership for X, X amount, amount of time. X amount of time, X amount of years. And, you know, whether it's structured as we have, 
three to five on the ice, or if it's you know make available you know two hours between four and ten o'clock for us to practice, and we'll sort it out later. You know, there's a million different ways we've structured it with not only schools but colleges and different clubs. So, so it's a lease agreement. Yes. Yes. It's the partnership that we're talking about. Yeah. Well, 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 not really. Not really. More of a surface contract, long-term surface contract. Long-term surface. Yeah. Okay. Want to be a lease? Because we don't have any yeah. specific lease space. We want to own and run a hockey rink. No. <laughs> no, that's not. <laughs> that, but that's what the town is. That what the town's talking about? Yes. Yes. Okay, the town's talking about a lease, and we're talking about a long-term surface contract. Yep. Okay. So, and what is the typical like? What are the typical costs? So, what we do is we we're not going to come in and say one sheet of ice is four hundred and fifty dollars per hour. Okay. You know, that's absurd. Right. You know, you take the average of four or five rinks in the area. That's basically your starting point. You know, are some rinks in the area a little bit cheaper because they're falling apart? Yes. Are some of them a little bit nicer? Yes. So you kind of look and the cost analysis of that for your what we're going to end up offering. Okay. So it's not we don't come in below the market with absorbing the price because it's pretty standard. Um, we just opened where we just opened in Wellesley. Most of the ice sheets around are between. Three and three seventy, and we're at three thirty, three fifty, depending on the time of year. In the winter. Okay. Yep. For the school. Yep. The school's three thirty. When you refer to public-private partnerships, yep. are you referring to the the lease agreements as that as a public-private partner? What do you describe that? Yeah. So the in the references on this would be the public-private partnerships would be the towns that are you know. Do you have any experience where there's where you're providing services to a town, but you're managing the building? Yeah. Every single one. Of all of them. We manage all the buildings. You know, this would be if the town would like to come in and partner with us and manage <coughs> that front half of the building. If I can pull it up, that would be fantastic, and I think we have a pretty good relationship with couple people over there that I think would be a very, very good partnership and we have a great working relationship as is. You know, we could certainly work together. So the discussion that the town's having with you is about that gray area for them to yep. lease and manage that portion of the building? Yep. Okay. And then we just run. So in that scenario, yep, call this town and then we would run the ice rink and the turf. And manage all the tenants and all the extra add-on stuff that goes into the facility. So actually, in that case, would we would we would be talking with the town to schedule swim times, but we would still need a partnership with you. On the ice, yeah. On the, for so the that's ice. why we're having these yeah, conversations. Yeah, Hillary, that's yes, a great there's, point. There's people so going either, in two different lanes, yeah. but you know we need to understand what you guys need on the pool, right. regardless, and on the ice. And then those two run parallel, and hopefully they meet in the middle. That they don't still know what each other okay. need and want. And that's only the case if the town agrees they want a pool. Right, but I'm saying even if the town does agree to the pool, we still you are then in the market for you a then contract rent from the town. And right, right. From yes, but, but, if the, but if the town doesn't buy in, we're running yeah. a contract for, for ice, ice and, and pool the with that. Yeah. Right, exactly. That's right. But we're but they're building a pool no matter what. No. No. Just not a bigger pool, I thought. We'll see what happens. I thought you said that it was the smaller size pool, no matter what. Yeah, but it may not be. Smaller <coughs> size may not be a competition based pool. We'll have to go back and. It talk might just to be like a. It might just be a couple, pool, like a kiddie pool or a. It may be a few splash goldfish aquatics up here. They just want some yeah. lessons. Yeah. I guess something like that. It kind of goes, I mean, they didn't articulate this at point, but like, are we as a, as a tenant, uh, if the town says no, are we as a tenant enough? To warrant you guys building this pool, I would need to talk to a few other schools and okay. groups in the area. So it's supposed it's needed to, to be yeah. rented all the time. Mm -hmm. Maybe, mm -hmm. but it's it's one of those things where sure. like, we'll talk. It'll it'll change the layout a bit. 
from discussions I've had. So we'll sort it out. But, I mean, it sounds like you're going to have the business for a pool with or without the town's participation. Based on based on the level of interest and the lack of pool availability, so I mean, I mean from my perspective, it sounds like you're going to have a pool. Maybe we'll see. <laughs> I mean, you can't. I, I mean, obviously you're in negotiations, right. so you can't. can't make a but right. I mean, it's just it's just absurd to me that we're. It's, I feel like we're all operating out of fear that it's not going to happen, but clearly it's going to happen. Well, we've been told. Oh, I'm not operating out of fear. I just want to know what the choices are going to well, be. Well, I think the people that are pools, really big pool supporters, are, are oh. afraid it's not going to happen. But clearly, there's so much interest and demand in it that, that the edge is going to put a, a competitive pool in. But I think it's a, a uh, Chris, you know, but I think a pool is a, it, it's not a revenue generating machine, right? Yeah. If you run it correctly, it is. But you can. You need to run it correctly, it needs to be designed correctly. You can't, you know, that's when it goes back to making the surface as dynamic as possible. Right. It's, it's tough to generate revenue just on a six lane 25 year pool. You need, you know, those membership lanes that are always dedicated to members. Mm -hmm. You need the warm pool for the bathroom, for the car, for yeah. all that fun stuff. It's, as long as it's designed correctly and operated correctly, which we have the experience in doing, it's profitable. People that I talked to have certain information about how profitable a pool can be. So hopefully that's in the right hands. Yeah. Can I ask an internal dynamics question? Mm -hmm. Who who represents the school department in these negotiations or in these conversations? I believe that's Mike. You're the would you be the person who represents the school? In discussing um, the ice time, and that's what you're looking at, correct? Well, I mean, who, how do we decide whether or not to enter into a contract? You know, how, who negotiates the contract? What do we think is a fair price? Like, like all of that. I just want to know, like, what, who's, who is, what is the chain of command here? I guess is my question. I would typically, typically, what we do now, because we have contracts now, is the superintendent and the business manager and I. You know, work with the with the facility on on the contracts that we have now. Okay. So, so we're, like when we use when we use USM for ice, for example, and we commit to that ice, we're essentially getting into a contract with them. We we sign some contracts for different things, and other contracts are our understanding. So when you buy, like in the in the hockey world, when you buy an ice slot. You bought that slot. You have to pay for it, mm -hmm. and so it's just the way that that relationship works. And, and the some, difference would be the the time frame, right? Because right now we do everything by the season, right? And so it's what I'm hearing is that we would be if we're looking at dedicated time at a local rink or pool, we'd be thinking in the longer term. Yeah. And I think <laughs> those, I think those discussions would be. I think the superintendent would have to. Be kind of help lead that and provide guidance to staff as to what to do. But I think when you're talking about the ice and a relationship, you might be thinking broader than the athletic team. Mm -hmm. You might be thinking about how how we might leverage that relationship to um, provide some other programming, um, either if, if it was a pool, either for our special education programs and physical education programs, if it was the rink, would we be looking at, you know, physical education programs or intramural programs like Broomball thing? You know, would we want to be part of that relationship? So I think Kate's right in terms of, you know, when we think about a relationship, we may want to think about a broader lens than just athletic. And athletic. I think time frame too, you know, you don't, I don't expect you to know your high school schedule in the next, for next year, never mind, the next five to 10 years. Right. You know, so it's, the way that would be structured would be, you know, it's X amount of hours for the high school team. Once the schedule comes in, you know, I sit down, we hash it out, we figure out what goes where, who fits in what spot. So basically the, the long-term contract with the hockey or swim team would be more general. And then as the schedule comes out, and the season comes out, 
we fine tune it a little bit when that's whether it's August first, whenever that does come out for you guys, then we do that on a year to year basis. But well, I definitely see I definitely see that relationship similar to how we go how we do now where you know um, you know we're essentially a priority one user. You, you folks understand that system. So I submit my schedules to town, but we're a priority one user, so we can bump other things. We, have, you know, we have priority access of all those things that it feels. Oh, it feels a little bit like that model yep. that we would have this the this priority time. Term, term yeah. So we would have. You know, it's not today. We're not going to be able to say we're going to take the three thirty to five thirty slot. Yep every day for the next 10 years. We would say that we're a priority user and we would have first refusal over the prime time slots. We'd have first refusal over the locker room, yep. the team locker rooms. If we wanted to rent those or not, we'd have, you know, I see, you I'm hearing you get that. What you want. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's how that relationship would go on the other right. thing. On the, on the pool, possibly. Yep. And in like, turn, we commit to being a tenant for you. In the long term, anchor, anchor right? Yeah. So that you know that you have that revenue stream to count on. Thank you. Um, this is for Kate and Mike. What is the longest term of a contract that you've entered into, and are there any concerns that you have, other than obviously that we might not be able to field the team, other than that, about entering into a long term contract? Right now, it's season to season. Right now, it's most of them are season to season. We do do some shorter term ones, like for example, Oak Hill players are uh, doing a play where we've entered into a contract with the company that provides the flying apparatus. So it's for that period of time, for example, Just for, um, for that day. event. And so there are some shorter term, but most of them are seasonal. And are, do you have any concerns about entering into a long term contract? I don't. I mean, I think it's. I think it's in the relationship, and we had talked about that at another meeting. That's why I was a little evasive the last time we talked about what the relationship could be, what that means. I think you had asked that question, and you can see now that the relationship um, could be a variety of things depending on um, what the board and, and direction the board wants to go with some of these these opportunities. But no, I think that. Um, you know, the, the, the contract would be such that we would be looking at time and usage and how, um, you know, available spaces and we, and we'd want to work into that relationship. Um, you know, we'd want to make sure that we're protected in terms of, um, are we responsible for maintenance and things like that. Are we responsible for any of those things? We'd want to look at that too. We'd also want to be good tenants. I mean, we're, I think we're good tenants of the facilities we're at. Our boosters have been very helpful in like at the Cape Pool. We've, we help pay for part of the timing system that's there. We've helped replace starting blocks. You know, we've done, we've been a good tenant and I, I see that relationship here too is that, you know, we'd want to be a good tenant um, but at the same time you know, um, protect ourselves, certainly. So I just had a question uh, really quickly, kind of, and it actually works really closely with what both Alicia and Mike said. So when we think about a long-term service contract, mm -hmm. I'm thinking, I mean, our, our swim program, for example, our competitive swim program is now in its 21st season, maybe a 22nd if I'm getting my year off. Um, is there a possibility or is there a precedent for a tiered uh, kind of agreement where you have things that we know are going to run in the foreseeable future unless Scarborough School System shuts down. We're going to probably have a swim team. So that type of it, I'm, I think, is much more comfortable for a longer term arrangement. But certainly our co-curricular offerings and even our curricular offerings, those can change much more. So that type of pool time dedication could be more challenging in the long term. So is there any kind of precedent for a tiered arrangement where you can dedicate? Yeah. Where it gives you room to It gives grow, you room to flex. Grow or, or contract. Things. Yes, one way okay. or the other. So, yes, we have done that in the past, and, you know, it's similar to the structure we have um, with a couple user groups right now where, you know, they have X amount of hours of life, but maybe next year they don't want it or they can sublease it out to 
other user groups? No, I don't think we'd enter into a contract without a kickout clause, first of all. Of course. And then secondly, I think that in terms of a growth model, we'd want to we right. want to look at that too. But certainly, there wouldn't be a contract yeah. we've done in the past without a kickout clause in case something happened and the budget got cut and we had no more athletic programs. You know, I mean, who knows? You know, so it feels a little less risky when you can kind of separate things out like that a little bit. Oh, yeah. This has been great, and I hate to cut the conversation short, but we have hit time, um, and we still had one more update. Do we want to extend to allow for the update on Alpine skiing, or do we want to move that into the regular business meeting? Let's move it into the regular yeah. business meeting. Yeah. Okay. Great. Chris, thank you so much. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it. Uh, that was super helpful. Do you want Alpine skiing, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Talk about dynamic spaces. You got to build a ski lift in the Indoor ski. I'm based. Hey, you want to push your boxes? What are the new challenges?